67 win against Stonehill. The St. Joseph team also hung 100 on Stonehill. This is part of a, a round robin called the Wildcat Challenge. St. Joseph's coming off of a loss at home to Texas A&M Commerce. Disappointing loss for the St. Joe's team. That returns a ton of experience, especially in the backcourt with Eric Reynolds and Cameron Brown. Part of the 2,000 points that they return, fourth most in Division One. Lynn Greer the third is part of that point production returning, but he is not starting tonight. He's on the bench to begin the game after picking up a bench technical in the loss on Friday night. Box shot on the Kentuckian, and here comes the Hawks of St. Joseph's after the early turnover. And Xavier Brown running the point for him. And the Hawks will play up and down with this Kentucky team. I mean, they're not going to try to slow it up. They'll be full court as well. Reynolds contested three off the front iron. And an offensive board for St. Joe's keeps it alive. And now a corner three. And that one goes for Cameron Brown. Thousand point score, eighth in school history now with 204 threes to his name. And there very well may be a combined 53 point attempts in this game. <laughs> Edwards is fouled on the drive. It's Cameron Brown. I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that Edwards is getting a touch on an early possession. I think they want to establish one in white early, try to get his confidence going. That was a design look for him to get to the basket. I think he's got a really nice mid-range pull-up that he's shown in practice. Just hadn't been able to be as efficient in the game so far. He's a freshman from Philadelphia, preseason first team, all SEC selection coming off of a nine-point game in a win against Stonehill. Is there any concern with Wagner and Edwards and their slow start? We're only four games into the season. I don't think there's too much concern. I think you're still learning about your team. And what I'm looking for is how much does Wagner and Shepard actually start to play together a little bit more with Shepard being primary ball handler, let Wagner be a little bit more of a natural two getting downhill. St. Joe's is averaging 76 points a game. To Dane's point about their tempo. They're not afraid to run. Top 40 in the country in average time of possession. Just over 15 seconds in tonight's dish and a finish by Rashir Fleming. He's a sophomore from Camden High School in New Jersey. And there's a few of those guys on the floor tonight, including DJ Wagner with the ball in his hands, former high school teammates. And tipped away and stolen by Xavier Brown. Here's Reynolds in transition. Another offensive board for the Hawks, and it's put in by Fleming. Well, you see how aggressive St. Joseph's is to start this game, and I love the aggressiveness by Eric Reynolds. They try to run him off the three-point line, so he does just that as a distributor, then takes it himself in transition, leading the offensive basket. The floater in the paint is no good. St. Joe's with a 7-2 lead here two minutes in. Good D by Edwards. Brown, little floating jump shot, and that's rebounded by Duke Piero. He was the one bright spot in their recent loss. The young freshman, 11, is not scared to compete against the best. Piero finishes with the left. He'll go to the line as Kentucky tries to cut into a 7-2 St. Joe's lead. And we saw this in the Kansas game. Piero is not going to sit there and hesitate. When teams play off him and dare him to shoot the three, he doesn't get insecure and try to prove what he can or can't do. He just says, you know what, I'm going straight to the basket. I'm going to attack that rim. 77% free throw shooter on this young season for Piero out of Leedsdale, PA, Quaker Valley High School. And he has grown into a complimentary player for this Kentucky team and a key player early on. They're still missing their three seven-footers. Aaron Bradshaw, the closest physically to returning, but hasn't seen the practice court the last couple of days. We've been around. There's a block at the rim. And Wagner finds the loose ball. To your point about those seven-footers being out, I think that's why St. Joe's is starting a little bit smaller lineup to try to match up with Mitchell. Wagner with the left hand. Something that you've seen on film, how he chooses to try and finish. Yeah, it's unusual because a lot of times right-handed guards like to go right all the way to finish. And Wagner has just really been dominate, dominant this season going left all the way and trying to finish with that offhand. Blocked by Mitchell. But another pickup at the rim. And St. Joe's having its way on the offensive glass. They've got a 9-5 to lead on the catch here three minutes in. Here's Wagner for three. Can't get it going. Just 24% from deep. 
Fleming finds a gap, forgot the basketball. Kick ahead is knocked out of bounds. We got a first line change for Kentucky. Reed Shepard checking into the game alongside Rob Dillingham. Shepard coming off of a magnificent performance 25 points, 7 of 8 from 3. He has wasted no time acclimating to the college game, and Dillingham offered a huge spurt in the game against Kansas in the first half. A sloppy start for Kentucky, but that's what Dillingham and Shepard do. They come in the game, and they immediately become positive in that plus-minus category. The team just seems to be better when they're on the court. Shepard was plus 43 Friday night. A run out and good hands by Shepard. That's what's impressed Cal the most. Yeah. He said, I knew what we are getting in him, but his quickness with his hands is something I wasn't quite ready for. And he's a great example of what Coach Cal is preaching to the rest of the team. Do the little things great. Quit worrying about scoring. Yes, Reed Shepard is shooting the ball well, but what fans appreciate is that right there, the deflections and just making an impact on the game regardless if the shot's going in or not. Lynn Greer is on the floor for the first time for St. Joe's. Son of St. Joe's all-time leading scorer by the same name, and Dillingham has the rebound. Dillingham with the hezzy and the finish with the right. How nice is it when you can have Dillingham get that rebound and nobody looks for it. You just run the court, let him become primary ball handler. St. Joe's, you better stop him. St. Joe's has three offensive rebounds here early on. Sandrico, the biggest guy at seven feet, tried to launch a 24-footer. Not sure that's what Billy Lang had in mind. Yeah, he made one last game, but I'm not sure that's the first thing you do when you get your first touch in Rupp Arena. Had he played by Eric Reynolds to draw the foul on Mitchell and make it a shooting foul at that. St. Joe's holding its own early on, trying to bounce back from the front. And try to do something special and get back to that big dance. And last time above 500 was the 2015-16 season. It was the last NCAA tournament under Martelli, whose son, by the way, Phil Martelli Jr., got a big win for Bryant. Knocked off Florida Atlantic yesterday. Eric Reynolds, the second, makes the first. Got another one coming. By the way, it's one thing to be Philly's team. It's another thing to be on television and on the runway opposite the Eagles. They were delayed leaving <laughs> Philly yesterday because the Eagles were loading up their two charter flights and head of St. Joe's one. And Well, we understand in Philadelphia the Eagles take priority. Uh, yeah, I hope we're on their quad box, you know, for the YouTube TV and everything else because they got some multitasking to do tonight in Philly. But he can't be any happier with the start right now on the road in Rupp Arena, especially after their last game's performance, the disappointing loss. They're going right at Kentucky. They're winning every loose ball, really, with these offensive rebounds and second chance points. And now finding a way to get themselves to the free throw line in consecutive trips. Dominating inside with St. Joe's picking up four offensive rebounds and nine of their 11 points have come via second chance. Lynn Greer, the third, puts the first one home. He's a Philly kid out of Roman Catholic High School, IMG for a moment, and then half a season with the Dayton Flyers before returning to the city of brotherly love. Dad, not only the great score, but he's in the Big Five Hall of Fame. Here's Shepard. And now Dillingham trying to drive. And a little floater goes for Antonio Reeves. Interesting conversation with Cal at shoot around today. So there's some guys saying, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. We're playing random. Just go. If the drive is there, take it. If the shot is there, take it. If either option is not there, then pass it. It's pretty simple. Taken away by St. Joe's. And Shepard able to challenge without fouling Lynn Greer. Yeah, great job by Shepard because Greer's a guy that really likes to seek contact at the rim. He wants to put his body into you and try to get to the free throw line. That time Shepard does a nice job, as you said, defending without fouling. Felt like this was the best backcourt on the floor in the loss to Kansas with Shepard running the point, Reeves and Dillingham as the shooters. Spacing does change a little bit with Burks out there, but nice wow. roll and what an opportunity for him to get an easy dunk there. Young man that brings great energy. Every practice I've been to, I mean, he's had the same demeanor, high energy, finishes every play. 
every possession. Kentucky picks him up full court for the first time. Rear guarded by Shepard. Cosmo Klaxik is on the floor for the first time for St. Joe's tonight. The Sandokal will turn around and seven footer leads it short. He had to sit out last year, waiting to get cleared by the NCAA from Winston Salem Christian School in North Carolina. Mitchell. Hawks has won for their last eight. In the corner for three. Sandico took a shot from Reeves. Fight for that rebound. He, he's a big body, is a Sandico. Seven feet, 285 pounds. And when he's in the game, it's tough, but you got to put a body on him. And Mitchell did a nice job on the previous possession. But if I'm Burks right now for Kentucky, I'm thinking put on the Jets. As soon as you get a defense rebound and Make 22 run up and down the court. Quick release on the three off the back rim. Darrow and Burks both went down. Shepard. Change of pace. So interesting front court here with Darrow and Burks. And no Mitchell on the floor. Dillingham with the dish. Burks kicks it out instead of shooting. And then Reeves got fouled on his way in. It's the second on Cameron Brown. I like the way Reeves has turned down a couple of those threes. We know how well he can shoot the ball, but he's got to be better as a three-level scorer. Early in this game, you saw that floater. I think he's got one of the best, prettiest floaters in the entire SEC. We hadn't seen it as much this year. But he's got to keep it in his arsenal and not be so reliant on that three-point shot. Last year, Coach Six Man of the Year in the SEC. And of course, anytime he can get himself to the free throw line, that's good news for Kentucky. His career high came against Arkansas last year, a 37 point game, and he was perfect from the free throw line, and that one went 11 for 11. And he's got that point guard experience, too. Uh, I mean, that's another reason you see this Kentucky team taking care of the ball so well is the amount of high IQ point guard type players they have on the court at one time. And even with this. Unique lineup in the front court. They got three guys that can be primary ball handlers. Ninth in the country, fewer than eight turnovers a game. Playing at a high pace. Pump fake. Oh, no finish, but a follow tip. Well, it's real simple if you're Coach Kyle Perry. Who is going to rebound on that end of the court? I mean, every time they miss a shot inside, they're getting a second chance at it. And one of the keys for St. Joe's was transition defense. Well, pretty easy to have transition defense when there are few transition opportunities. St. Joe's did not play well in the loss Friday. Here's a lob. Dillingham with the great hands in the finish. One of the things that got in St. Joe's way Friday night in the loss is the fact that they didn't make those same layups that are going tonight. Oh, yeah, they missed some bunnies. One to end the first half, another to start the second half. Just one of those nights. But they are a much better team than they showed. Nile by Dillingham. And another point in the paint. And he's going to have those opportunities. Run ahead. Reeves reverses it in. It doesn't get any quicker than that. After a made basket to get down the court in two seconds, that's how they practice it. The blow by, and once again, testing without fouling, it'll be St. Joe's basketball. 14.11 board score as a sophomore. 31 and 3, his senior year of high school. And this year, Haskins comes off the bench. Uh, St. Joe's is without a key player tonight. Christian Winborn, sophomore from Baltimore, gave him 14 minutes a game, has missed the last couple of games with a hip injury, right hip strain. So they're man, man down tonight. Kentucky's still missing seven three-footers. Let's go and see if you're listening. Come on, man. Shot clock late. There's four. Oh, almost a great feed, but Mitchell with the kick save. 2.2 left on the shot clock. 
Oh, they reset it. Harvey on the kick. Of course. Where's St. Joe's at its best offensively? Uh, running Reynolds off, getting offense through Reynolds. But with him on the bench right now, it's going to take guys like Greer and Brown to step up. Dillingham is not shy. Freshman out of Hickory, North Carolina, gets off a quick one. And even four or five from deep against Kansas. Absolutely changed the momentum of games. And when a game needs a little bit of pop to it, when they're getting a little bit stagnant, Inner zero and white, and good things would tend to happen. Another offensive board for the Hawks, and they keep it alive with a couple of tips until Dillingham finds it. A great job of rebounding down by the guard. Don't just bet on your big man to get it. Well, certainly different responsibility with no Oscar Shibwe in terms of being more of a team rebounding squad. And they're going to ask all of their guards to have a hand in that. Dillingham takes the bump from Greer. That is Greer's first. There's Dillingham doing it all in this possession here. Gets the long rebound, collects it. He sees the defender backpedaling, knowing how Dillingham likes to attack the basket. Says, no problem. You're going to pick me up at the free throw line. I'll just stop right here and pop it. Cats have turned it up. They've made six of their last eight. And errant pass from Dillingham. I just need to make the single on that one. If he can bring more consistency on the defensive end, there's a lot of minutes out there for him to gather with that offensive performance. Uh, this guy's an energy giver. He, he just absolutely is. When you see him in practice, if he's not bringing his A game, it seems like the rest of the team isn't. He's got a lot of contagious energy to him and positive more times than not. Well, it's physical on that bump. And we're going to tie up after the dig-in by Mitchell. And the possession arrow belongs to Kentucky. Yeah, you called it. I, I, even though they're, they're, Kentucky was fine with the ISO on the post, I thought Mitchell made a nice veteran play there. Just giving this little dig just to disrupt it. Crowd that area, forces the jump ball. St. Joe's showing a little pressure for the first time. But what a start to the season by Reed Shepard. And he's looking for an assist to Mitchell. Edwards with the follow tip nearly win. He said, don't go all alone underneath. That was a tough catch right there by the big fella. I mean, that had turnover written all over it. But a great gather and very patient down low. Wagner dragged his pivot foot. And a Kentucky turnover. Take a look at this pass. Greer throws a left high ball here. And 22 able to gather it. Pump fake. Go up. Nice and easy off the glass. The Sandico really impressed this staff. And scrimmages and the offseason hasn't quite been able to keep that momentum going. Been a little bit banged up but a ton of potential for the redshirt freshman. Only played 17 minutes Friday night. Deep feet of the baseline. Again, getting it in the paint. And now Wagner trying to lead the run out. Wagner with the left, and it fell out. Wagner so far tonight 0 for 3. Nearly had a steal. St. Joe's shooting just 29% by helped by eight offensive rebounds and 11 second chance points tonight. Deep three. Try to bank it in. But a good job by St. Joe's not going after that one to get back in transition. Reeves out to Dillingham. Got it. Well, he's playing with a lot of confidence, isn't he? Cats with their largest lead of the game. Looking for an opportunity to pull away. Reynolds for three. He's got the answer. You got to chase on that if you're Wagner. They do a really nice job, does St. Joe's, of these 
handoffs with the big fella, using him as a screener to get your best shooter the ball. Dillingham, quick move. It was almost a no-look shot. St. Joe's looking to reclaim the lead. They led by five at one point. Reynolds got around Dillingham. And now Reeves in the lane. Off balance, but drew the foul from Brown, and that's a key for St. Joe's. That is the third on their fifth-year guard. Well, we thought they might put up a combined 53s in this one. Already 18 three-point attempts combined for these days. The transition light going from high school senior in Camden, New Jersey, to freshman in Kentucky. Well, I, I think you can get to your spot and at the rim much easier. And so when in this context, when you're getting to that left, when you're right at the rim, it's one thing. But when you got all these bodies and good defenders, it's tougher to get there, and you're trying to do it from the block, maybe three or four feet out as opposed to right at the rim, that's a lower percentage shot. And I think he's got more in his bag as a ball handler than maybe he's showing right now. Another free throw coming from Antonio Reeves. He goes one or two from the line. And Katz once again picking up full court. Shepard back on the floor. This is a version of the lineup that was so good against Kansas. The difference being Wagner on the floor instead of Dillingham. But Dillingham and Shepard going into that last time out were both plus five, plus minus. By far the best combo. Nice finish by Rashir Fleming. He's got a half dozen. Really nice back cut. That time, Fierro got caught ball watching, and 13 just goes right behind him, gets to the front of that rim. Mitchell displaced on the block. Now he gets it 12 feet away. They come to double. He's a great passer, and he finds DJ Wagner for three. Great call. I mean, you want to send help on Mitchell, but he is such a good passer. It's tough to. Send a double team knowing he's going to kick it out and always makes the right read. Reeves went flying at Reynolds. Reposition for the three. What an answer. Second time Reynolds has done that tonight. Got close out under control, though. He's too smart and crafty of a shooter. Here's Reeves, and he gets a three to go. An adjustment to his game. He's got that right thumb taped up. Must have occurred in game. He didn't start with the tape on his thumb earlier tonight. Well, if there's anybody on Kentucky's team that might give up a three, that I think's going to get you three right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's Reeves. I had Dillingham would be in the conversation, yeah. too. <laughs> Those guys do not get down on themselves over a defensive error. They are, have a short memory. Into the seven-footer, strip. Shepard comes out of there with it. Four on three for the Cats. Wagner steps through. There's a left-handed finish. Got to that other side of the rim. A little bit closer on that one. That all starts with the quick hands of Reed Shepard on the other end of the court. You talked about this lineup that they came in out of that break with, and they get a team in white. Impacts winning as much as anybody I've seen so far in college basketball this season. 25 points on 9 of 10 shooting against Stonehill on Friday. Cats most threes in the Calipari era. They made 20 against LSU in 1995. It's a preview sign. It's 17 Friday night. Big four minutes for the Hawks here. I mean, you've played really well in this first half. Got to keep Kentucky in check. Keep this thing single digits. Oh, and then a mental mistake with Greer stepping on the sideline. And they're also trying to do it without Cameron Brown, who's got three personal fouls and has been on the bench. And that's the one guy Coach Lang said when I asked, who do you think embraces this type of big-time stage as much as anybody on your roster? And he said Brown. Unfortunately, the foul troubles kept him out of it so far. Shepard around the screen. And Mitchell covered up. And so Wagner tries to drive, has it blocked. 
gets it back. Reeves will let it fly. Reeves for three, his second of the night. Even when you think you're there on the catch, it, you just can't be aggressive enough. He is seeing a big rim every time he touches it. Lachek tried to feed it inside, and Shepard with the steal from the backside. Great help, D. Catch on an 8 nothing run. Outstanding instincts, like a free safety. And then a Kentucky turnover. Here come the Hawks. And a fantastic finish by Reynolds. He's got 12. Reynolds couldn't have ran that left lane any better than that. And a great dime by the freshman Brown. I'd like to see him get Mitchell out on the perimeter. If they got in Sandico trying to guard him out there, he's either going to have an open three. There it is. There we go. It's going to let you buy my lottery good, ticket good if you call. made that one. Yeah. Brown with the left, off balance. Another offensive board. That is number nine on the night. To just one for the Cats. Greer into the corner for three. Klawczyk is just two for 14 from deep here in this young season. If they're going to pull off the upset, he's going to have to hit a couple of them before this game's over. Reeves contested two, and that one's a little wide, right? Catch with a six-point lead. Yeah, they had an eight-nothing run. I think they can take advantage of certain mismatches. They, they do have to learn how to close. That margin of error still isn't quite there. And what I also learned was, look, when other teams are going to say, hey, I'm going to put the four-man on Mitchell and put my five on Thierro, Kentucky can say, that's fine. Thierro is going to shine, and Mitchell might not do as well in the stat book but he's making an impact by creating another advantage for a teammate. Good hands by Justin Edwards to knock it into the backcourt. But the result is a three from St. Joe's. That's Xavier Brown with his first three of the night. I mean, that freshman out of Philly, he, he's got a bright future. He played extremely well in that loss to Texas A&M Commerce. Edwards got rid of it quickly, makes his first triple tonight. And the Cats with the answer after a two-minute scoring drought. Pass into the corner for another three. You were dead on about the three attempts in this game. That's a 16th from deep in 34 overall shots for St. Joseph's. And credit to Sandico. He got it deep in the paint, and everybody collapsed, and he found a shooter quickly. And then Wagner tried to answer. Dillingham finds the streaking Edwards, but he left it short. And he really could have used that one. If you have a three on one play and come back with a thunderous dunk, One's confidence all of a sudden starts to tick up quite a bit. Contested three goes. St. Joe's getting hot. That's Reynolds this time, and it's his third three of the night. Around him better. And Shepard, he's not the only guy for Kentucky, but he's certainly the top guy in terms of making players around him better. Yeah, I'm still looking for an analyst that would bring that to the table. <laughs> you, you, may be, you may be Dan Issel's favorite, but that's not getting you very far around here tonight. Mitchell for three. Got it! Three, four, Mitchell just spreads the court so well, especially when St. Joe's. This is not the lineup they started with in this game. They've gotten bigger, and it's tough for them to stretch the perimeter with a seven-footer. St. Joe's plus eight on the glass tonight in his first half. Offensive rebounds have killed Kentucky. There's a drive and a kick. So of the kick threes. Brown, Mitchell blocks it, one second left, a heave from Thierro, just wide. Shepard hasn't made a shot, he hasn't even taken a shot, but he has four assists and three steals, and Kentucky is plus 13 when Shepard is on the floor. He's obviously a difference maker for John Calipari's team. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Cal and his staff have said, all right, as this game goes on, instead of tinkering with different lineups, rotations, best five are just going to play. we got to go take this from St. Joe's because this is a veteran backcourt. St. Joe's, this roster is not built on transfers or a bunch of freshmen. 
They have upperclassmen who come in here and expect to get a win. Talking to Cal today at shoot-around, he made it clear his rotations are going to happen early. He doesn't want one five out there for any extended period. And that bench play with Dillingham and Shepard, they came off three minutes into the game. I would expect them to approach the bench at the 17-minute mark again here in the second half. Immediately, St. Joe's gets it on the block. Sandico gets the bucket. That's his second of the game. Nice patience. Knowing that the double team is not coming, they're going to leave Mitchell on an island and a good left-hand finish by Sandico. Here's Justin Edwards. He hit a three, but then missed a dunk. Was getting ready to get into offensive rhythm. Tries to change direction, and we get a hold on Cameron Brown. That is his fourth. And Billy Lang, how about this? Billy Lang, Brown was coming off the floor, and Lang just put his hands out and said, no, stay on the floor, play with four. Pardon me, that's his third? Okay, well, play with three. Point still stands. That's some trust there to keep him on the floor. He says he's a coach on the floor for St. Joe's. He's going to have to play extremely smart on the defensive end. The arrow goes behind the back. And the jump hook fell off. Good D there by Fleming. He's giving Thierro a step off, so it's hard to get past Fleming if you're Thierro. Nearly a walk, but the loose ball scooped up. Here comes Wagner. And the jam. Cats extend the lead. And that's one way to get the lid off the rim if you're 21. See if that does ignite Wagner and the rest of this crowd. Step through left short by Greer. Did indeed start the second half, and then a foul after his second. And Coach Kyle says, get lost in the game. This is what he's talking about. Do the little things great. Be the first to that 50-50 ball, and let that get you going in your momentum and confidence. Wagner, three of eight from the floor, one for three from deep. Cameron Brown now takes a seat. Sitting with three personal fouls less than two minutes into the second half. See, watch how 13 is playing off the arrow, and so it's it's harder for the arrow to take him off the bounce when the guy's already got two steps on him. Mitchell with the kick, the arrow. And a reach in on the drive. And that one goes against Fleming. Second on Rashir Fleming, the sophomore out of Camden High School in New Jersey. That's the same thing the arrow had success with against Hunter Dickinson, was just going at him, seeking that contact, trying to make something happen in the paint. Here's Mitchell for three. Got it! I think they can get that all day. You make Sandico, the seven-foot freshman, get out there and try to go on the perimeter, I think that's trouble for St. Joe's. Beautiful feed, and Fleming will go to the free throw line on a nice hard cut. And this is where Mitchell is such a threat. This pick and pop. You put a big man out here, and he's got to cover the ball screen and recover to a big shooter. And Mitchell, that's just too tall of a task for the seven footer from France. Fleming at the line. For sure, Fleming, 6'9, 230, sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey. High school teammate of. Well, D.J. Wagner, Aaron Bradshaw, and it's here Haskins, who's teammate of him on this St. Joe's team. Fleming, five of eight from the free throw line on the season. <laughs> Missed them both. Wagner on the run out into the corner for Reeves. Got it. It's a nine point Kentucky advantage large. You've got high IQ and good ball handlers out there on the court and that's what he has one through five. So St. Joe's team dealing with some foul trouble. Cam Brown with three personals on the bench Fleming. And Greer both have two. Defense, 
Here's Brown for three. Huge three from Xavier Brown, freshman out of Roman Catholic in Philly. His stepdad, Justin Scott, an associate head coach on Billy Lang's staff. Here's Mitchell now for three. But you see the adjustment by St. Joe's. They put their four-man, Finkley, on Mitchell and have a Sandico on Piero. Three ball is short. Nothing but catch under the rim. Here's Wagner. No numbers. Doesn't matter. Going to take it anyway. Shares it for the jam for Piero. DJ Wagner seems to see the game better than most, like a running back finding a hole when seemingly there was none there. And don't just stand there and watch. Back cut the way Thierro did. Brown, a little fake with the shoulders, ends up in the corner for three. And another one for St. Joe's, eighth of the night. They're going to let him fly, and they are shooting the ball with confidence. Early in this game, it was the second chance points that kept them in it. But if they want any chance of this upset, make no mistake about it, it's going to have to be from deep. Shepard and Dillingham waiting to check in. There's a turnover and a push ahead for Xavier Brown. Left it short. Wagner. Got it to roll home after the collision. He's got nine. Good job by Kentucky. Knowing Brown had fallen down on the other end. They had a five-on-four advantage that lasted longer than your typical fast break. Another corner three, Anthony Finkley. And now Mitchell with the run ahead, and it's rejected. As Santa Co met him at the rim and sent it the other way. Seven-point game here at Rupp Arena. We'll talk NCAA tournament and a professor. What would a loss do to Kentucky's seed line at this moment? Well, I think it's important to remember it's November the 20th, uh -huh. okay? And Selection Sunday is St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, which is almost four full months from now. So we're going to have lots of teams taking punches and punching back and build their resume. It, it, in a way, it's a bigger game for a team in a program like St. Joseph's because in the quad one era where games in that top section of your resume are so critical, teams at the Atlantic 10 level just don't get many opportunities. Kentucky is going to play 20 quad one sure. games thanks to being in obviously an excellent and deep SEC once again this year. Dillingham and Shepard back on the floor for the Cats. Here's Reeves off the feed. Little floater goes for Reeves. You mentioned the SEC. Describe the SEC now where it was seven, eight years ago when those quad one opportunities were pretty bleak in conference play and what you've seen transpire in the men's basketball department. Well, there's been obviously a, a very intentional effort even before expansion and Reynolds you can clap you know it's yeah cool. no Resurgent. no 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 I'm not that I'm not yeah. that it's just I admire his game he's one of those guys that looks like he could run full speed for 40 minutes but you know in, in the days when the SEC was divisional you'd have those teams in the West right. uh, that would just play these horrible out of conference schedules and, and then they finally got religion because they brought in some people who knew, mm -hmm. uh, like like a Greg Shaheen and a Mike Trangizi and a Dan Leibowitz mm -hmm. over the years at the league office. And, you know, I, I've run some numbers to, to maybe move that along a little bit and uh, certainly don't want to get in the game. Actually say, and it works out pretty well for the guy on the opposite sideline there tonight. Yeah, favors Cal, the, the challenge would be Big Blue Nation expects you to win six games every tournament. Every single one. So St. Joe's with a couple of threes hanging in there, making it a three-point game. And here's Mitchell with a spin move in the paint. And great hands, but it'll turn out to be a foul for Anthony Finkley. But 
You've been calling this game on St. Joe's Radio. Break down what you've seen so far tonight from both sides. Well, interestingly, the Hawks couldn't have played worse in right. their last game. Uh, talking to Dane about his scout. Uh, give a m Commerce credit, but the effort and execution's clearly been at an appropriate level tonight. And I don't see, you know, starting true freshmen, any shrinking from the moment by these Hawks. And, and, you know, that's been the program's history, kind of an America's underdog overachieving kind of mentality. And, you know, they, they've never played a game against Rupp Arena. They haven't played Kentucky since the Sweet 16 in, in 97. So this is a big deal for a Philly school to come in here and really compete. Four times to the Elite Eight, last time 2004 for the Hawks. This is a veteran team, which would help explain the fact that they're not shrinking from the spotlight here at Rupp Arena on the Hawks' first ever visit to Lexington. Well, I would say veteran by today's standards. Oh, no doubt. Here's Brown for three. And Piero trying to fight for the rebound with Kwachek. And it'll go the other way and belong to St. Joe's. I mean, it took almost a whole half for Kentucky to get an offensive rebound. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, that's an effort thing on the part of the Hawks. Now, Hawks also are missing plenty of shots, which means there's rebounds to be had. Yeah, over half their shots are from three, so oftentimes those long shots can be long rebounds. But it wasn't just that. I thought St. Joe's just came in here and, and threw that first punch. And they have not backed away even when Kentucky's made a run and the crowd has started to get into it. And, and I think... You'd like Kentucky's, playing today, right, with yeah. this chuck and duck? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, some of the, the undersized advantages that have worked for Kentucky in the past, St. Joe's can match up with that a little bit. I mean, that they they have some of that undersized ability as well, especially when they got to give uh, Sandico a breather. Yeah, in some respects, playing small is doing the Hawks a favor. Right. But this kid's been terrific. Mitchell misses the three, can't find the rebound. And the Hawks with a two-on-three coming the other way. Greer did not start this game. He's a junior and a Philadelphia native. Gets a ball again and kicks it to Brown. And Brown hits a huge three. It doesn't That's get any prettier with that ball, ball movement, though. I, I don't have the stats, but I guarantee you his percentage from that spot is higher than any other on the floor yeah. in his five years. Well, it makes sense with the head coach with NBA experience. The corner three carries so much more value than it ever did. And Cameron Brown, who had to sit with a couple of fouls in the first half, has hit two threes tonight. Yeah. And, and and Billy Lang's all about that. Yeah. I mean, he brings that background. He knows the analytics as well as anybody. And... You can imagine we have a lot of conversations about it because I kind of like it too. Yeah, of course you do. Numbers I, guy. I thought one thing that was really interesting from Billy Lang when he told us with his experience with the 76ers, he talked about it was just a different level of preparation when he had a Kentucky guy come to a combine. De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, he said they were on a whole nother level and really praised John Calipari of having his guys NBA ready. Here's Mitchell with a little head fake and taps out of bounds. We're going to let Joe Lenardi get back to his real job. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thanks, Bell. Your plus minus was good for your Hawks. Okay. <laughs> Any ID at the table. Yeah. Some people aren't so lucky. <laughs> St. Joe's shooting just 42%. But they've hit 11 threes to hang in this game. Didn't start that way for St. Joe's. Here's the arrow. Challenge, it'll go to the line. The Coach Cal wanted him to become the finisher and challenged him to be the best finisher in the country. And takes a tough catch there. Finishes through contact. And one when they really needed it. Now it's about not just converting the and one, but getting back on the defensive end and starting to get some traditional stops. Missed the free throw. Five-point game. I mentioned St. Joe's getting hot. They started one of seven from three. That's when Kentucky's first shot defense wasn't bad. They just weren't boxing out. But since then, St. Joe's 10 of 19 from beyond the arc. Wachek will let it fly. Once again, he's not shooting the ball well this season. Maybe the only guy on the floor that's not really a three-point threat for St. Joe's right now. Kentucky, oddly enough, got burned by 
what many people tell you was an effective scout on Dewan Harris of Kansas going underneath the screen, as was the plan, and that guy knocked everything down. Shepard. And an offensive board back out to Shepard. He'll share it this time to Wagner. Whoa, way off. Unable to connect, but what a play by Mitchell. I mean, he got that rebound as he was falling down. That was a legit bounce pass. It wasn't just something blind. Offensive putback. Kwachek got his hands on it. It'll be Kentucky basketball. Mitchell gets a breather for the Cats, replaced by Burks, and then Edwards will follow him off the bench. As Burks is trying to carve out his niche, I, I think this is a great opportunity for him right now to be solid defensively, get defensive rebounds, find your point guard, push the fast break. If you can get an offensive rebound and put back, great. But right now, this is a Kentucky team trying to find their best five that can get them a stop. Can 23 and White being subbed in make a difference? Shepard off the handoff. Piero with the hesitation. Now both teams going cold. St. Joe's with a scoring drought of nearly two and a half minutes now. But only trailing by five. Kentucky has not been able to pull away. And a foul on the perimeter. No basket. And Piero second. That's just a tough cover. I mean, these are some quick veteran guards for St. Joe's. And you see Reeves come off the bench to try to get a little bit more perimeter defense against these feisty guards. St. Joe's 5 of 10 from deep in the second half. Baseline drive and the reverse for Lynn Greer the third. It's a baseline out of bounds play they really like. Greer takes it out and he just steps right in and gets the post up on the guard. He's very comfortable doing a big man game down low. Edwards for three. Got it to go. Second triple for Justin Edwards tonight. Well, that shot is going to be huge for Edwards. He came in just two for 14 from deep. Stepping back into a three on the other side, and that's no good, but a foul on the rebound will go against St. Joe's, and that'll be the third on Greer. There's Edwards, just not bashful at all. Pretty early in the shot clock, really, in a contested three, but nobody's complaining when it goes in. Nice shot by Edwards. And then on the other end, we talked about Burks. You want to earn more playing time, you do just that. You box out, get a foul on the defense, see if you can't knock them down here. Jordan Burks, freshman from Decatur, Alabama. Played an overtime elite in Atlanta where he averaged 27 points a game. He took 20 shots a game. And a ton of threes. He's been forced into post play here early in the season with the bigs out for Kentucky. Still kind of an unlimited timeline and when the seven footers will return. Didn't see Vladimir Vesic at practice today. Right. Going back to the guys on the floor, excuse me, but I think it's interesting. Wagner's been on um, Reynolds, uh, the best scorer for St. Joe's. Now Reeves has that opportunity. Keep an eye on two. If I'm St. Joe's, I'm trying to run something right at him. Good defense by Burks. And then a slot at the same time for Mitchell. St. Joe's finds the loose ball. Here's Brown. Good defensive communication by the Cats after that loose ball rebound. Shot clock at seven. Shot clock at five. Shepard got a piece of it. Mitchell picks it up. Here's Edwards. Three on two. And loose ball lost will go to St. Joe's. 
Sharp's gotten moving just a little too fast. Yeah, it's a shame because Burks has had really two opportunities to get a couple easy layups or dunk, and he's just been un unable to corral the ball. The effort and energy is there. I think overthinking it just a little bit. From St. Joe's, two, two's just got to touch the ball. He's got 21 points, five of nine from three. And Wagner right back in and going to try to shadow him. And Wagner got his hands on him. That's the first on DJ Wagner. Eric Reynolds with a huge night tonight. He's a volume scorer, and he's got St. Joe's in this game at the eight-minute mark of the second half. Thanks everyone, especially Vicky. She's been with us since the beginning. And stay glass to St. Joe's. Only a couple offensive rebounds in the second half for the Hawks, so Kentucky's cleaned that portion up a little bit. Eric Reynolds has been their scorer off the feed. And another offensive board. 12 for the game for the Hawks. And a block by Edwards. Really nice help there by Edwards. Reed Shepard gambled and missed, but his teammate there to clean it up. Wagner with the reverse. He's into double figures now. A nice drive along the baseline. I think some of Wagner's confidence is coming from his defensive intensity. And a blow by and a bucket on the other end for Xavier Brown, who's got 11. He does not look like a freshman, has he? Nope. Reeves hangs and spins it in. Eight point Kentucky lead. Reeves with 20 points on nine shots tonight. Brown right in Shepard's face. Trying to find some space for Wagner. Got it. I, I love it. And that's the same shot Coach Cowell worked on him, worked on with Wagner after practice yesterday. That floater in the lane being on balance nails it there. Brown from behind the screen. Sandico keeps it alive for St. Joe's. Tried to ice it, and Reynolds is able to split, get all the way to the rim. Well, Wagner got hung up on the screen. He's done a pretty good job in the second half. At that time, Reynolds knows they're trying to force him off the three-point line, says no problem. Cal with the play for Wagner again. High ball screen with Mitchell. Out to Edwards. He goes mid-range. Yeah. I think that's a good shot for Edwards. Just one, two dribble pull up. Here's Reynolds, guarded by Wagner. This has been the matchup all night. Wachek got in the paint. Now Brown. Lost Shepard and hits the three with a shush. 14 for Cameron Brown thanks to four threes. If you want any chance of winning in Rupp Arena, you got to have guys not scared of the moment. Better than what Reynolds and Brown are doing. <laughs> 20 of Kentucky's 50 field goal attempts have been from three. Cal era record in made threes last time out when they put one on one on Stonehill against that zone. Here's Mitchell out to Dillingham. Dillingham fresh off the bench. Fires away. 
If Dillingham were a golfer, he would only hit drive. <laughs> Another blow by, and that time it's Xavier Brown who finishes. We've got a two-point game. And Kentucky's just struggled the past couple times with that high ball screen. If the guard's going to get clipped, then the big's got to switch off and take it. Wagner back out to Mitchell. Here's Dillingham. Shot clock at seven. Wagner. Ball heavy, and he gets that blocked, and they get a foul on Rashir Fleming. We got a one possession game between 16th ranked Kentucky and St. Joseph's out of the Atlantic 10. Kansas is once again with this young team. He looks to ramp up instead of peaking early. And one area he did point out to the team was, hey, in that Kansas game, we shot three shots with 18 seconds left on the shot clock, and they weren't good. So shot selection has certainly been emphasized. See if the Wildcats, despite being a young team, can be quick learners and close this one out more effectively. Led by 14 in the second half against Kansas, but let that lead slip away. Wagner hits both free throws. Cats lead by four. Eric Reynolds hands on hip near corner. Guarded by Wagner. Here's his touch. Trying to reach it inside. It's knocked away. Dillingham out front. Oh, the follow is tipped away. St. Joe's is going to come out with a three on one. Brown with the left and a bucket. Pinball game goes the Hawks way. We got a two point game again. Edwards was a fingertip away from a follow jam on that opportunity. Here's Wagner now. He goes hard inside. Asantico with the rebound. Biggest guy on the floor. Reynolds lurking on the wing. Seven-footer gets a touch and lost it. Missed opportunity for the Hawks. And there's Wagner saying, hold up, hold up. Let's take our time. Antonio Reeves rating to check in at the next step ball for Kentucky. Mitchell for three. And the door is still open for St. Joe's. 2.20 to play down two. And that shot's been there all night. He just has not been able to connect it. As high of a rate as he has in the past. Reynolds has been a distributor lately, and Asenico gets it inside. Great patience by the big man, the pump fake, and the finish down low. Two minutes to play in a tie game. Billy Lang is all the way to midcourt. Trying to get his defenders in the right spot. Dillingham for two. Took a hop and went in. 140 to play. Cats up a bucket. They are on their feet at Rupp Arena. Greer going on his own. Nearly turned it over. He did. Piero with the steal and then the foul from Cameron Brown. That may be the best half-court defense Kentucky has played and when it mattered most. I think Wagner's just been sensational, especially on the defensive end, making the catches tough for Reynolds and have the supporting cast try to beat you. That time, just a little bit of an errant pass from Greer. And Thierro picks up the loose ball. That is Thierro, 77% free throw shooter, one of two tonight. On the offensive end for St. Joe's, they've hit 13 of 32 from deep. Moving it along at a 41% clip from three tonight. 
Fierro missed them both. Rebounded by St. Joe's. They get a jump ball in a Hawks possession. I think Reynolds was thinking that would be a foul. They're going to get the ball nonetheless. Good job getting in there. But unable to convert for Thierro. Reynolds has been quiet the last few trips down. He's their leading scorer at 23 tonight. Here he is off the screen. Can't get the ball to him. Contested three. In and out. Asanico with the rebound. One minute to play, and Billy Lang gets a timeout. Wagner has been on Reynolds for the most part tonight. And he is chasing him through now the bottom left of your screen. Greer will handle the point. Shot clock at 10 coming out of the timeout. Greer goes all the way around. Shot clock at four. Gets stuck on the baseline. Here's Brown for three after the tip. Huge three. And St. Joseph's has the lead. On the other side, Dillingham. Plenty of time for the Cats. Lost his dribble and nearly traveled with it. Kentucky gets a timeout. One minute to the first half. Wagner will inbound it. Here's DJ Wagner, the freshman, crossover into the paint with the left. No, follow! It's Mitchell with the jam! Cats back by one, 29 seconds left in regulation. Reynolds offers the screen. They switch on him. Greer can't get it to him. Greer penetrates. Wraparound pass. Asanico blocked by Mitchell. The foul with 14 seconds left. The big fella is going to the free throw line where he's only been six times this season. I thought they had an opportunity to get Reynolds open. But on that last bucket, excuse me, on the pass here, he's been pump faking all night. And Mitchell, if you're going to foul him, foul hard. Make him earn at the strike. Priest to Sonico. Is five and six from the free throw line of the season. And we are tied. Reed Shepard enters the game with 14 seconds remaining, and Rashir Fleming back on the floor for St. Joe's. Sasanico for the lead. Shepard with the board. Ten seconds left in regulation. Here's Wagner. Five left. Wagner drives, hangs, tough shot. And corral by St. Joe's. Quick timeout asked for. They didn't get it. And they're going to look at the... St. Joe's has nearly got a timeout. It wasn't reviewable, so, so over time we go. Certainly interesting to see what lineup Coach Kyle trusts to start this overtime. Edwards, the freshman, from behind the screen for three. Pretty early. I mean, that, that's the type of shot that Coach Kyle said, hey, in the Kansas game, we took three shots with 18 on the clock. That one was really early. Eric Reynolds has been the big scorer for St. Joseph's tonight. Shot clock at nine, and he's able to draw a foul on Edwards. I think he likes that matchup better than the Wagner matchup. I mean, D.J. Wagner has been all over him in the second half, which has created other opportunities for the St. Joe's teammates. But that's a tough cover for Edwards on a very crafty and experienced score. Edwards will take a seat. Dillingham first off the bench in overtime for Kentucky. I think Coach Cal recognized that as well. This gives Kentucky more opportunity to switch on the perimeter as needed. 
And Wagner, second time he's been tied up with Reynolds, and that's resulted in a foul. It was the right call. He hugged him. How difficult is it to defend a guy like Reynolds if they're going to run off screens in this scenario? And he's so good at running off screens, setting you up. Greer fading away. Tough shot. And Piero saves it for Dillingham. This young Kentucky team unable to close it out in regulation. Trying to figure it out in overtime. Mitchell, the veteran, got it. A 23-year-old. Here's Xavier Brown, freshman, down the paint. Shot clock at 10. Greer with the okie doke on Reeves. What a move. When the play is broken down and St. Joe's has had nothing, it has been Greer creating for himself or for teammates deep into the shot clock. Dillingham behind Mitchell. Mitchell content to stay in the perimeter. Another three. Another hit. Timeout taken. Trey Mitchell. Plug and play 23 year old with four threes. That is first big game against St. Joseph's when he was at UMass. He had a double double 15 and 11 in the 8 10 tournament in 21. Here's Greer. He's got great speed and he's able to kiss it off the glass. Just another miscommunication there by the guards. If you're going to switch, switch. But right now they have left the ball and gotten confused on some pretty simple action multiple times. To date, the biggest win this season for St. Joseph's was a win against Big Five opponent Penn earlier this season. Penn turned around and beat Villanova next time out, so that'll carry some good weight, but nothing like a win on the road at Rupwood. And they get a hold on Xavier Brown trying to hold Dillingham in check. See this came last with, bucket. came with under four seconds on the shot clock. Excuse me, with Greer being able to get to the basket for St. Joe's. He's just been able to probe and get to that right side. Here he is on Reeves. Wagner's saying get through, and then they're getting confused. Do I take him? You got him. Just a late switch. If you're going to switch, switch out and be there. And so Rob Dillingham at the free throw line now. 11 of 13 on the season, and his first attempt from the charity stripe tonight. Shepard back on the floor for Kentucky, replacing Reeves. Not an easy position. It's been a while since we've seen Shepard. And so to be getting a little bit cold on the bench there and then come in for the last two minutes shows you the confidence Coach Cal has putting a young freshman in any situation. And it also makes sense in terms of his rotations. He wants to do it every three minutes, getting guys in. St. Joseph's hit 14 threes tonight. Here's their main weapon, Reynolds. Guarded by Shepard. Now Mitchell. What a feed by Reynolds. Zasadiko couldn't finish. And then he commits the foul. Well, that was about as well drawn up a play and executed from St. Joe's until the end. And he put it where only Asandico could get it, who has been finishing pretty well in this game. But the big seven-footer is just going to miss this bunny with the left. And credit Wagner getting in there and Getting that 50-50 ball. But much better job by Kentucky to start that possession. Shepard and Wagner communicated. They switched out on that ball screen, and Greer never got to the paint. DJ Wagner's got a free throw, a couple free throws coming, excuse me. Mm. Free throw shooting, leaving yeah. more than a little to be desired. Now just one of three in overtime, 10 of 18 for the game for the Cats. Shooters touch, I suppose. 2.07 to play. Two possession deficit for the Hawks. Greer, floater. Back iron, Shepard to the board. Feed ahead to Fierro. 
And now he'll bring it out. Figured this game would be decided in the 80s, but didn't figure it'd take it over time to do so. Greer is all over Shepard. Nowhere to go on the left side. Wagner takes it down with his left hand. Catch by six. Three ball. What an answer for Reynolds. One of the few mistakes Mitchell has made. He got clipped on that screen, did Wagner. Mitchell's got to be up. That's a three-point shooter. Here's Dillingham. Mitchell gets a touch. Size advantage inside and the foul. So you see Wagner, when everything else breaks down, he's able to get to the paint. Time and time again does he get penetration. And that time Mitchell sags off when you got the best three-point shooter on the court tonight in Reynolds. You must get up and make him play 15 feet and in. Trey Mitchell, grad transfer from West Virginia. Plenty of stops for him. Started at UMass, then Texas, then WVU. And what happened there when they posted up Mitchell is because St. Joe's switched with a smaller guy mm -hmm. because it's Sandigo can't card him on the perimeter. So they say, all right, let's switch it. Well, Kentucky plays chess match. Fine, we'll put him on. Your smaller opponent. And that was a 6-2 freshman guard. Xavier Brown had picked up the foul. Under a minute to play in overtime. Shepard with the fast hand. Steals it away. And then it's given right back. St. Joe's has a two-on-one. And a foul will put Reynolds at the free throw line. Well, characteristic by Shepard with the quick hands and creating the steal. Uncharacteristic with the turnover. The communication's been much better since Shepard came in the game on the ball screen action. But just gets a little bit careless there as they try to get in a little bit of a prevent offense. Keep the dribble alive. Eric Reynolds is second. Was second team all Atlantic 10 last year. He has 26 points tonight on 6 of 11 from 3. And he is a perfect three for three from the free throw line. Reynolds wide awake. He's got 28. With the way Kentucky's been struggling from the line, I'm not sure you don't foul if you can't create. Wagner, he, he missed his first, the last one, and got a fortunate roll in the second. Shepard trying to get it in bounds, and Kentucky got a timeout. It was Cal who got the timeout at midcourt. To your point about free throw shooting, Kentucky just 6 of 10 at the free throw line in the last five minutes in overtime tonight. Home run ball to Wagner. He's going to take it. It's blocked, but then Edwards follows with the dunk. An aggressive play call to go deep against the press, and it's now a five-point lead. I thought Wagner was going to pull it back out. He didn't hesitate. Well, Coach Kyle with a terrific play. Triples tonight. Big minutes from the freshman Xavier Brown trying to inbounds. Reynolds contested. Brown trying to get it to Reynolds. Nearly turned it over. Here's Reynolds. It was in and out. And a foul on the rebound is going to go against Isadico. And that will put the Cats at the free throw line. Second on the seven-footer from Paris. A nice job taking away any open look for Reynolds. Still was able to get a decent look at it given the circumstances. But well defended by Kentucky. Billy Lang with that NBA experience, you know he's got some quick hitters. And Kentucky defended that sideline out of bounds about as well as you could. This is Mitchell at the free throw line, three for four tonight. Once again, now six of 11 
in the last five minutes of regulation plus overtime as a team. Shepard with the steal. Took it from Greer. St. Joe's has to foul. That's the one they want to foul. And they get Wagner and send him to the line. 16 seconds left. Shepard's quick hands may have just sealed it for Kentucky with his mom and his dad looking on. His mom, one of the all-time great defenders in Kentucky women's basketball history. This kid's just an absolute winner. You need to win the game on offense, he's got you. You need to win it on defense, he's got you. And what you love to see is how all of his teammates came up to him, congratulating him, love him. This kid is awesome for this culture and part of their winning DNA. And plus minus tonight, Shepard leading all cats. He's plus 14 in a seven-point game. Wagner essentially sealed it with his first, but St. Joe's has three-point threats all over the floor. 16 seconds left. See if they get it to Reynolds in the backcourt. Oh, a fastball nearly intercepted. And then a foul by Dillingham trying to back up on Brown, and that stops the clock with 14 seconds left. That was like a Patrick Mahomes pass. <laughs> dropped his arm angle and fired it to midcourt. Yeah, but this, this is a coachable moment right now for Dillingham. Cal saying, hey, come on, man, we're up 8-14. Do not reach. That's not the time to gamble. Just play solid. Xavier Brown at the free throw line. 63% from the strike on the season. I think one thing important too, Tom, is there's going to be different times this season where different guys in the game. Yep. You got to make sure you aren't consumed and you and how you're playing, but how the team is doing. You got to be just as happy for the five that close out the game and get the win as if you were on the court yourself. It's a seven-man rotation right now for John Calipari. That will grow once he gets a seven-footer on the floor. Whomever that may be, whoever ends up there first. Shepard going deep again. This time it's Edwards, and he'll pull it out. Share it to Wagner, and the Cats are going to salt this one away, but a lot closer than they expected before this thing tipped off. It's a dime by Shepard, man. I mean, that is a... Tough throw along the sidelines and zero hesitation. His dad MVP of the 98 Final Four wears that same number 15. And Wagner at the free throw line. I, I would call this a breakout game for Wagner. I mean, it wasn't always pretty, but I thought his defense on Reynolds in the second half uh, was was really solid. And when they couldn't get Kentucky couldn't get much going in the half court, he was able to dribble. He created that offensive rebound opportunity with for Mitchell late in regulation by drawing two defenders, and of course made some clutch baskets in the paint as well. Nine seconds left in overtime. What an effort by Billy Lang, St. Joseph Hawks. They came on the road and gave the 16th ranked team in the country absolutely everything. Here's Brown. And Shepard ends up with the ball in his hands to finish this game.